Many investors were hoping that AMD would catch up to NVIDIA, capturing the market share that NVIDIA now dominates. It's becoming increasingly apparent that AMD is not going to approach NVIDIA in terms of market share in the accelerated computing data center space. But that's okay. AMD can still generate strong shareholder returns by taking a much smaller market share in that category. In this video, I wanted to evaluate the latest developments at AMD, what's been going on with AMD, and how the company is capitalizing on the increasing demand for artificial intelligence without battling NVIDIA for market share. Let's take a look. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. So Lisa Su, who is the company's CEO and president, said for the latest quarter, they delivered strong top and bottom line growth in the third quarter. Revenue coming in above expectations driven by record sales of their Epic products, which is CPUs for the data center. Remember, NVIDIA dominates in GPUs for the data center. And then they had robust demand for their Ryzen processors for personal computers. I'll talk a little bit more about that later on in the video. Let's stick to the data center segment where AMD saw revenue increase by 122% to a record $3.5 billion. We believe we gained server CPU market share in the quarter as enterprise wins accelerated. So as you can see, AMD demonstrating phenomenal growth in the data center segment just like NVIDIA, but NVIDIA is much faster revenue growth at much higher profit margins and a stronger market share for its product, which is primarily the GPU and the Blackwell technology, the Hopper technology, which encompasses more than just the GPU or more than just one component of the data center, but providing the technology that enhances a data center that optimizes a data center. So AMD still making great inroads in this category. The CEO saying that Epic has become the CPU of choice for the modern data center and our multi-generation product portfolio delivers leadership performance and significant TCO, which is total cost optimization advantages across virtually every enterprise and cloud workload. And so AMD is gaining market share in the CPU that goes into this newly developed data center technology. And of course, that's coming at the expense primarily of Intel, who is losing market share in this category. Intel dominated the CPU market share of the previous generation technology, where most of the data centers were primarily based on CPUs, where the CPU was the primary component. Now, with the latest generation technology, these data centers are optimized for accelerated computing, and they're based on GPUs. GPU is the primary component of this next generation data center. This is where NVIDIA dominates. But Meta Platforms alone has deployed more than 1.5 million of AMD's Epic CPUs across their global data center fleet to power their social media platforms. And if you watched my videos on Meta Platforms in its recent quarterly update, Meta Platforms said that in 2024, they're going to spend close to $40 billion on capital expenditures, most of that going to data centers. And they also said that in 2025, they're going to spend significantly more in that same category. So that's going to be good news for AMD and AMD stock investors because Meta is already utilizing so many of AMD's CPUs, and if they're going to spend more than $40 billion, I'm estimating closer to $50 billion in 2025, a good chunk of that money will go to AMD for its Epic CPUs. Another sign that AMD is gaining traction is that Dell, Hewlett Packard Enterprises, and Lenovo and others have expanded the number of fourth-gen Epic platforms they offer by 50% in the last year. And if you're in business, you'll know that having distributors 
sell your product is a great advantage because they help get your product out there. They help inform customers about the capabilities of your product and get your product from your shelf, your production facility into the hands of customers. And these facilitators are a great help they generate sales, they generate conversations, they introduce your product to customers, they provide information, they answer questions, and it's generally helpful to have distributors have your products. And the more of your products that distributors are willing to carry and sell, the better it is for you because that signals that they are confident that they can sell your product. They wouldn't carry your product if they weren't confident they can sell your product. They don't want to waste their own time trying to sell a product that they don't believe matches what the end customer needs. So with these distributors carrying more of AMD's products, it sends a signal that they believe the end market user will benefit and will want these Epic platforms. The CEO goes on to say that we are very, very well positioned for continued growth in share gains based on the strength of their Epic portfolio and the momentum they've built in cloud and enterprise customers. But also, their data center GPU revenue has ramped up considerably as they launch their GPU to compete in this space they call the MI300X. They say adoption expanded, OEM and AI customers, especially Microsoft and Meta, expanded their use of this MI300X accelerator to power their internal workloads in the quarter. And this is significant because Microsoft and Meta are large enough companies to have access to NVIDIA's products. They can buy all of NVIDIA's products. So they can have 100% of their data centers based on NVIDIA technology. But they're choosing to have some AMD technology. And I've been talking about this for several quarters now that these customers, especially those large customers like Microsoft and Meta, they're not going to want to be 100% reliant on NVIDIA. Even if NVIDIA's technology for the AI-optimized data center is better, even if we can all acknowledge it is better, they are the best, these companies will still want to have AMD in there. They will still want to diversify into some of AMD's products, utilize some of AMD's products, get familiar with utilizing AMD's products, incorporating them into the system, just in case, just in case. And it gives negotiating advantages to Microsoft and Meta when they go to NVIDIA to talk about buying the next several billion dollars worth of NVIDIA products. If NVIDIA pushes too hard on pricing, on terms, on anything that these companies may not like, they can always threaten NVIDIA and say, well, if you push us too much, we'll give AMD incrementally more share in our data centers. And so that threat of going to a competitor will keep NVIDIA not so powerful in the negotiations. Of course, NVIDIA still has very strong negotiating power because of how excellent their technology is and the demand for their technology is through the roof. It's sold out. So they still retain strong negotiating power. But this kind of keeps a lid on that. This next generation technology from AMD gives a little bit of a diversification to the supply chain of some of these large companies. And you're already starting to see that here, right? Why would Microsoft and Meta go with AMD? There is, that's the primary reason why they go with MD, AMD. Of course, it's also because NVIDIA's products are sold out and they might not be able to buy as much that they want, but still it demonstrates a strategic importance of having not reliance on one company for such a critical component, right? This is becoming so strategically important for these large tech hyperscalers like Microsoft and Meta. So it's interesting to see these latest developments for AMD. It's good to see them gaining traction here, of course. They're not anywhere near NVIDIA. They just operate in similar markets. And so investors may have been a little bit too optimistic about the prospects of AMD, but they don't. AMD doesn't need to catch up to NVIDIA or approach NVIDIA 
to benefit from this market to generate shareholder gains. And they've already demonstrated solid revenue growth and solid profit expansion in 2024. Hey everyone, so many of you have been asking about my investing strategy and I'm excited to announce that I've written a book that's available for sale now that describes my six step invest investing framework for evaluating stocks. I've added the link in the description below.